Hello friends, this video on NEAT genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before we talk about the various patterns of inheritance, let us talk about the very basic term for genetics and that is alleles. Now obviously the basic term for genetics would always be a gene because all the information which defines your characteristics they are all contained in the gene. But when we talk about gene it becomes very important to talk about alleles. Why? Because alleles are the different versions of a gene. Now a lot of times students have good amount of confusion regarding what exactly are alleles. They understand genes, but they do not understand alleles. So let's try to understand alleles in, in a slightly different way. So by now, all of us know that genes always go in pairs. So whenever you talk about your hair color, your eye color, uh, the tallness or dwarfness of a plant. So everywhere you would have seen that the gene always go, it, it go in pairs. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's take some examples. Now, let's think of a trait which is controlled by gene. So most of our traits are controlled by gene. For example, the gene for hair color. So when you think of the gene for hair color, what are the various possibilities that you might have? So your hair color might be black. Your hair color might be brown. You think of something like the pattern of your ear lobe. So the ear lobe might be free, the ear lobe might be attached, right? If you think of eye color, so your eye color, it might be uh, blue, it might be black. So when I say eye color, I mean the central portion of your eye, which is either blue or black or sometimes brown in color. So what are these? These are basic, basically various versions of the gene. So you need something which should be able to define these different versions of the same trait. So hair color is a trait and this for this particular hair color, you might have brown, you might have black here. So they, there have to be some de different versions and these different versions of a gene are alleles. Now let us understand it more clearly. So let us say, where are, where are the genes located? So we, by now we know that the genes are located on the chromosomes and the chromosomes, they also exist in pair. So you actually have two chromosomes like this and they are like kind of connected to each other at the centromere. So that's how the chromosomes are. So let's say this is your chromosome. So here, these two chromosomes are the homologous chromosomes because like they are corresponding to each other. Both of them contain the same set of information like both of them contain genes for the same corresponding traits, but maybe their versions would be different. Why? Because this particular chromosome, like this homologue is coming from your father and this homologue is coming from your mother. So we, you can say that this is your paternal homologue, which is coming from your father. And this is your maternal homologue, which is coming from your mother. So we have discussed all of these that during the sexual reproduction, during the process of reproduction, what happens as part of fertilization, one so half the chromosomes come from the mother, half the chromosome comes from the father and both of them together form the zygote which later grows and develops to form a new organism. So that's how it happens. So when you look at each chromosome, so in every chromosome you have two homologous chromosomes, one homologue from the father, one homologue from the mother. Now let us talk about the genes which are located on these chromosomes. So let's say that on your chromosome somewhere here you have a gene for eye color and it says so this this gene is for is controls the trait eye color and this particular so the value for this particular uh, gene here is black. So basically on your paternal homologue, the eye color gene is black. So black is basically the value for that particular gene or the version of that gene. Whereas you have a corresponding gene on the maternal homologue also, which controls eye color or which yeah, which kind of controls the trait eye color. So if you have a gene for eye color here on this chromosome, you must have a gene here on the maternal chromosome again for eye color. But the version might be different. So here it might be black and here it might be brown. So what does that mean? That means the set of 
uh, characters that have passed on from your mother to you. So your mother have passed you brown eye color. Your father have passed you black eye color. Right. So now when you look at your chromosome, what do you have? So you basically have two versions of eye color, black as well as brown. So basically when, when we want to denote this, how would we denote this? Now let's say that black eye color is denoted by a capital B and brown eye color is denoted by a small b. So now if I ask you what is, what is, the, uh, what is the phenotype that you have? as far as eye color is concerned. So you basically have a capital B, small b, which tells us now, so what are these two? These two are the two genes, basically the two versions of the genes, right, together. So when you have a capital B, small b, that shows that you are carrying a brown eye color trait as well as a black eye color trait. Now out of black or brown, whichever is dominant, let us say that black eye color is dominant. So if black eye color is dominant, then you will have black eye color. Because see, one person cannot have black as well as brown eyes, right? So you will either have black eyes or brown eyes. Now, if black is dominant over brown, so you will have black eye color, but your genotype is capital B, small b, which means that you had one brown eye color trait as well. So in this case, each of these capital B, small b, what are these? So these are alleles. Why? Because these are different versions of the gene. So both of them represent the same gene that is for the eye color, but they are different versions. One is for black, one is for blue. Similarly, in case you would have got black eye color from both your father as well as mother, in that case, your genotype would have been capital B, capital B, which would have uh, given this information that you have received black eye color from both the paternal as well as the matern maternal homologue. In case you would have received brown eye color from both, then this is how your genotype would have been. So in all of these cases, this capital B, small b, these are alleles. Similarly, if you talk about the Mendel's experiment, where we talk about the tallness or dwarfness of a plant, the pea plant, you remember? So there you say capital T, small t. So what is this capital T, small t? So this is the overall genotype of the plant because capital T is for tall, small t is for dwarf. So this tallness and dwarfness, what are these? These are different versions of the same gene and the gene here is the height of the plant, right? So capital T, small t are the alleles and capital T, small t together, this is a gene. Similarly, capital T, capital T is again a gene. Small t, small t is again a gene, which tells that the plant is dwarf. Here, the, the plant is tall. Here again, the plant is tall because capital T is dominant over small t. So this is the concept of alleles. So now the next question is, how do these genes control the traits? Now when we say traits, traits are basically the phenotypes, the characteristics that we see. So how genes are controlling these traits? Now based on how the genes control these traits, there are two, there are three different categories of inheritance. So the first one is monogenic traits. So what is monogenic traits where one gene controls one trait? So it's a very simple uh, relationship here. One gene will control one trait. But most of the traits that we actually see in human beings, most of these traits are not really monogenic. Like there were some traits with, which were previously believed to be monogenic, but their inheritance is likely based on more complex genetic models. So one example of monogenic trait is uh, dry and wet earwax. So you would have seen that some people have dry earwax and some people have wet earwax. So these are the two versions of the same gene that is the same trait earwax. Now how this get inherited from one generation to another is purely monogenic. So we will look at it in more detail. The next type of traits are polygenic traits. Poly means many. So when multiple genes control one trait, so that means, for example, let's say intelligence in human beings. So intelligence is not just controlled by one gene. So there are multiple genes and their cumulative effect control the intelligence. Similarly, the hair color, eye color, free or attached ear lobes. Like here you see, this is an example of free ear lobe. This is attached ear lobe. Human height, 
skin color so these are all examples of polygenic traits and therefore the inheritance patterns in these cases are not very simple so it's like there are multiple genes there are many genes it could be two genes three genes five six seven or n number of genes and all of them contribute small small uh, make their small small contribution and as a cumulative effect of that you get that trait so let's consider the skin color so let me give you this example like in case of earwax the earwax can either be dry or wet so only those are the two outcomes but when you talk about skin color you would have seen that there are many different shades of skin color for example you might have you might come across people who whose skin color is brown you might come across people whose skin color is light brown again dark brown again light pink dark pink white or black so you see you, you have a lot of variations in skin color and why these variations arise because there are a lot of uh, too many genes they are together controlling one trait so everybody is contributing something to that trait and as a result you see so much of variations so that is polygenic trait and the third category is pleiotropic traits. So here one gene controls multiple traits. So it is exactly the opposite of polygenic traits. So there will be one gene, but that same gene will control multiple traits. For example, in the pea plant, the garden pea used by Mendel in his experiments. So there the same gene controls the seed coat color as well as the flower color. So the color of the flower and the color of the seed coat, both of them are controlled by the same gene. Similarly, uh, there is a disease called the sickle cell disease in human beings that is also caused by a gene which has multiple effects. So a small defect in one particular gene can actually uh, cause impact on different parts of the body or on different organs of the body. So one gene is actually controlling multiple traits. So if you look at these three different types of traits, monogenic means one to one, polygenic means many to one. Pleiotropic means one to many. So in simple words, that is how you can uh, distinguish between monogenic, polygenic and pleiotropic traits. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.